Hey guys, it's Alex from Fast Fitness Tips. I'm getting a lot of queries recently about the effect of height on cycling performance. And I'm going to show you today really quickly how to build your own kind of model of height and body mass. In other words, body composition or the anthropomorphic effect on cycling. How does your body affect cycling performance. Now, this is not going to be a super accurate predictor where you can apply it to, you know, yourself or your friends and get an exact number in the real world. Now, this is something to help you understand the effect of height on performance. And the reason that's important is because, to put it simply, we all talk about watts per kilogram, but nobody's talking about watts per inch or watts per centimeter, are they? we are easily confused by the effect of height and performance. In fact, Zwift have recently been criticized for their algorithm, which looks disproportionate when you scale height, and you can do it in Zwift. You can just change your own height in the setup screen from, I think, 120 centimeters up to 210 centimeters. So you can get a huge variation in height if you want to tweak your height. And sure enough, when you tweak your height, you get a pretty substantial difference in your final performance. Let's look at this another way. Think to yourself, what is the relationship between height and performance? In other words, when you have a tall rider versus a small rider, where pretty much everything else is the same, isn't it obvious that the taller rider is going to go slower? Because if you hold everything the same, if you hold their weight the same, their fat percentage the same, their overall body mass the same, in other words, their weight, then the tall rider will have the disadvantage of having to push more air out of the way. There'll be less aerodynamic. So no doubt height will adversely affect the CDA of the rider in that example. So what I want to do instead is ask you a slightly more sophisticated question, which is if you scaled up a rider just by height, but allowed the variables that normally scale with height to increase, and that would be what? Body mass? Yes, that would generally increase. The power of the rider? Yes. And the CDA itself, of course, we've already said, if you scaled up those kind of three key variables, what would be the predominant effect? Would you get a saving or would you get a penalty riding on flat ground or riding on hills, for example, for a taller versus shorter rider? Well, maybe the results will surprise you. Okay, so really quickly, let's say we're going to crack this code. What do we need? Well, we're going to start with a hypothetical rider, rider A, 160 centimeters, and a hypothetical rider, rider B, 190 centimeters. So what we want to know is their VO2 max, their body fat maybe, their muscle mass, their overall weight, their power. You know, we've got a lot of variables here that we don't know. How are we going to approach this? Well, the first thing to look at is their CDA, actually. That's actually reasonably simple. Now, if we could put those riders in a wind tunnel, we get the answer, yeah? Or we could do that virtual wind tunnel on the road, like the Aeropod, and also get the answer. But in truth, we're modeling it here, so we need to do it hypothetically. But Bassett, 1999, already provided the formula for this. It might not be super accurate, but it's a starting place. And they're saying the frontal area is a function of the height times a mass to the power of 0.5, well, 0.425, if you want to be exact. So we need to know the rider mass as well, right? Well, this is relatively easy in the sense that we can estimate the 50th percentile from the population average. And I'll help you out with this. Is actually for cyclists around about the height to the power of two multiplied by 0021. It just happens to come out about right. Now, in the general population, it is true that if you scale somebody up, uh, if you increase their height, then their mass tends to increase by a cubic function, in other words, the power of three. And that's probably because this old fashioned idea of the body being a, like a cylinder may hold when you increase body fat at the same rate that you increase height. But cyclists tend to keep their body fat pretty low, so that cubic function doesn't usually hold. And I would suggest using the formula here. Okay, so with that formula, our 160 centimeter rider gets a body mass of around about 54.6 kilos, and our 190 centimeter rider gets 77 kilos. Plug that into the Bassett formula, and we can see the CDA of the shorter rider 
is more efficient is 0.32 as opposed to 0.356 for the taller rider. Okay, next, a really tricky one, we wanna estimate their power. Now we could use that old formula from Hunter Allen relating to VO2 max, roughly the same. They've got the same kind of aerobic engine. Then we could use this formula VO2 max equals 10.8 times watts over mass plus seven. But that actually is a formula that is correlating power with overall body mass. Most sources say that power, particularly for short distances and flat races like sprints, is more related to lean body mass and also, if anything, cross-sectional area of the muscle rather than total mass. So how would we get that in our model? Well, here we need body fat percentage. Again, we can use a population average. And for example, if we take 20% body fat, maybe on the slight high side, but still under the 30th percentile for the population, then we could work out lean body mass per rider, yes? And from that, if you divide by height, you're getting an estimate, not an accurate, exact, precise measure, but an estimate of power. Times that by a convenient constant, and I get around about 243 for the FTP for the short rider and 342 for the tall rider. In other words, the difference in power is scaling according to the, the, to the height. If you wanted to do sprint power or one minute power, let's say, I get 570 for the short rider and 682 for the tall rider. So with these simple steps, we can now work out watts over CDA. And the watts over CDA is the predominant effect when cycling on the flat. I get 1,774 for the short rider and 1,916 for the tall rider, which means on the flat, basically the tall rider has an advantage. In fact, put those into a little um, cycling calculator and it comes out around 37.5 kilometer per hour. Obviously that depends on the constant, but ballpark figure, 37.5 kilometers an hour for the tall rider, 36. 7 kilometers an hour for the short rider. So think about it like this. If the short rider is riding at the same speed as the tall rider when training on the flat, the short rider is doing more work. And that more work over time, if they adjust to that, if they use it as a training stimulus, effectively they are training under a greater intensity. And then when they go into different conditions, for example, climbing, they will potentially have an advantage. In fact, that advantage is not just potential or theoretical, it's real, because then if you work out from our figures, the watts per kilogram, I'm getting around 10.4 watts per kilogram for the short rider versus 8.8 .8 when scaled for the tall rider, or in speed, 13.7 climbing 10% grade for the short rider and 12.3 for the 190 centimeter rider. Phew, guys. Okay, well, what does that all mean? Well, basically what it means is tallness, you know, excessive height, isn't always an advantage in cycling. If you scale up a rider like for like, then the tall rider is going to have a problem with climbs. But they may have an advantage on flats and in sprints, despite the fact that their raw CDA is higher. But the bottom line is that if you scale up a rider like for like, that in very crude terms, weight is proportional to volume, while strength is proportional to cross-sectional area. Okay, it doesn't quite hold true in our model, but the, the difference in scaling does hold true, so the effect overall is correct. So why then, after all that, if we return to the Zwift model, does the Zwift model look so odd? Actually, we've modeled it, and Zwift does seem to use that Bassett formula for CDA, and actually, based on the information at hand, it's not an incorrect model. The reason it looks odd is because when you change your height in Zwift, the other natural variables, the anthropomorphic variables that normally change with height, don't change with height. You're purely adjusting height. So when you change, let's say when you decrease your height, your power and your body mass are staying the same, but you're getting a very large effect on CDA with effectively no inherent losses, as in this graph here. Another curiosity then is if height is a disadvantage for cyclists who are climbing, why do we have these tall riders who are the winners in the Giro and also in Tour de France, like Froome and Dumoulin? <laughs> the, reason, the reason for that is that these guys are kind of freaks of nature. If you think about population norms, 
their body fat is so low they can afford to be tall but relatively light and possibly even you know with a lower cda than we expect so Froome may be 1.86 meters tall 68 kilograms but his body fat is around seven percent so his lean muscle mass probably is around 60 63 kilos de moulin similarly the same height weight around 71 kilos body fat around 9 10 percent but one word of warning here don't let the pursuit of thinness become an obsession because we already know that in cycling we've got a lot of problems brewing under the radar with osteopenia in other words thin bones and two-thirds of professional cyclists have been shown to have abnormally low bone density so what I'm saying today, guys, is it's really simple to build a model that's not super accurate, but it does give you an understanding of the effect of these um, normal variables, not just watts per kilo, but also watts per CDA, and in particular, the effect of height. And yes, it does appear that the Zwift model, if you're interested in that, is probably correct, but the reason that it looks so odd is because they're just scaling height where everything else is staying the same, and that is not a real world effect. All right, guys, that's probably enough science for one day, but I want to give just a quick shout out to our Fast Fitness Tips Strava Club, which has recently become accredited on Strava. Check out the link below. We're doing a lot of posts. There's some good discussions on there. Come and join us on our Strava Club. But until next time, guys, whatever your height, whatever your weight, whatever your body composition, have a great ride. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you in the next video.